uh, as well. Um, and um, so anyway, so we got the Persian Empire uh, that you have. Uh, and um, Persian Empire it has like multiple names uh, that it went by. Uh, the common name, uh, of course, that it goes by uh, is the Persian Empire or First Persian Empire. And then they have another name you see right here. Uh, you can see right there, which is the uh, Achaemenid Empire or Achaemenid. It's pronounced different ways. I think Achaemenid is one of the common ways they say it. That's usually the nickname for the Persian Empire, which uh, lasts from about 539 to, 5, uh, to 330 B.C. Uh, so that's basically it. Uh, and uh, this empire, if you know much about it, was was huge. It was one of the largest um, empires in the world, uh, at least at the time when it existed. Uh, I think 80 million people lived under uh, the Persian Empire at one point. And you can see here it went, it stretched from like the Hindu Kush, where Pakistan and India is, all the way to Turkey, and then also all the way to Egypt. So it had like 80 million people living uh, under the Persian Empire. So it was huge. Uh, and um, the um, Persian Empire um, was made up of different areas, uh, mostly Iran, which is where it was started, where, which they call Persia, which is right here. Uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, Iraq, which is Mesopotamia, uh, Armenia, Turkey, Syria, Israel, Lebanon, Egypt. So this thing was huge, uh, this, this empire. Forget how big it was exactly compared to the world, but the time it took up a good chunk of the world. At one point, they even pushed into try to take over Greece, which they failed, uh, which I'll get to later. Uh, talk a little bit of background about uh, the Persians. The Persians are related to like they're kind of like related to Indo-European, really Indo-Aryan peoples is the real common name uh, that they uh, refer to who the Persians were related to. Um, I think the term, a proper term in Iran they use is Indo-Iranians. Uh, but um, Indo-Aryans are peoples or Aryans that were people that, people that came out of southern Russia. And they migrated into that region around where uh, Persia and Iraq is. Uh, and so often the term Aryans is used. Uh, most of the Aryans were uh, from an area which is like around the Black Sea to the Caspian Sea. So from the Aral Sea all the way to the Black Sea uh, was about the area of where it was uh, roughly like in this area. They migrated down. They came into Persia. Uh, and they were made up of different peoples that were there. Uh, in fact, the slider tells you they were mostly. There are two groups that were mostly dominant in Iran. You had the Medes, sometimes called the Kingdom of Media, and then you had the Persians or Persia. So there are two states. They were kind of like these two Indo-Aryan tribes. Uh, they were there, there in Iran. And the Persia itself later, like the Persian Empire, is kind of a state that kind of was developed from both those two states originally, and then other states were added later afterwards. I do have the founder of the Persian Empire. That man, of course, is Cyrus the Great, who also went by Cyrus the Second, uh, the king of Persia originally. I think they call him sometimes Cyrus the Persian is what they dub him. And um, uh, Cyrus the, Cyrus the uh, Great was important because he was the founder of the Persian Empire, uh, which reigned around 559 is when it started B.C. And then this state lasted to about close to uh, 330 B.C. It's about when it ends, when Alexander the Great, like I said, uh, destroyed Persepolis and took over Persia. Uh, and um, Cyrus was actually, um, he was part Persian, but he was also part Mede. He was related to both states. And um, the mid-6th century, uh, he forced the state of Media, the Medes, to merge with his state of Persia. And it became like one state 
which would later be the Persian Empire. His dynasty was later called Achaemenid, which you see right here, Achaemenid. Uh, and um, that's just the name that the Greeks called uh, that dynasty. Uh, and so the Greeks later called uh, the Persian Empire, the Achaemenid Empire. That's what they called it uh, later on. Uh, the bulk of the areas that uh, Cyrus conquered were mostly uh, Iran, Turkey, Mesopotamia. Uh, but I think at one point he started pushing eastward towards India. And then he also began to push like into like Syria and all that. But Cyrus conquered the bulk of the Persian Empire. Uh, he also founded the first capital, which was called Parsagate. Uh, so they called it. Uh, and it's kind of where the word uh, Persian comes from or Persia uh, from the first word, which is Parsa, uh, basically, or Farsa. Uh, and so that's where you get the word from, Persian or Persia originally. Uh, later, there's another capital, which is Persepolis. Uh, but Persepolis is not really becomes the capital until the, the uh, 5th century B.C. Uh, but as empire keeps stretching, you know, like other rulers later will push the empire, like I said, into Egypt. They even try to push it into Greece. And they also push it all the way to India, where the Indus, you know, Indus River Basin is uh, down in India. So, so yeah, it was a massive empire uh, that Cyrus, you know, put together. Uh, and it could, it, it probably wouldn't be equaled, I guess, again, until probably Alexander conquered it, and his empire was a little larger, uh, which included the Greek world and the Persian world put together, you know, at the time. Uh, that's his actual tomb, which I think is in southern uh, southern um, uh, Iran, near uh, the original capital, of course, a long time ago. Now, they had another ruler who came later down here named King Darius or Darius the Great, also known as Darius the First, he was dubbed. Uh, he was a late 6th century, early 5th century uh, king of Persia, a uh, Persian ruler. Uh, and um, he expanded the empire. By the time his reign, I think, ended, uh, Persia was you know, starting to push into Egypt. Uh, they were pushing eastward into India. And then also under Darius, they tried to invade like part of Greece. Uh, as well. Uh, and um, what Darius is known for is a bunch of things which are pretty important. Uh, one uh, is Darius is the one that founded the capital of the Persian Empire, the one that would you know, be there till Alexander the Great sacked it, okay, which was in 330 BC. Uh, and um, that's in southern Persia uh, right there. Uh, and so that's where the actual name of, like, you know, like I said, the word, you can see the word Persepolis is where they get the word Persia or Persian from, uh, from the original name. And that's what they still call Iran that. Iran is still called Persia today. So they call it over there. That was a massive capital that they founded, uh, you know, there uh, at that site. Uh, and, um, was considered one of the greatest cities in the world, uh, of course, until Alexander destroyed it. Uh, Alexander, um, here's some pictures of, um, of, of course, the ruins of Persepolis. But Persepolis, um, part of why Alexander destroyed it, uh, he was kind of ang angered about how uh, the Persians had invaded the Greek world and sacked a lot of their cities like Athens. And I think Thebes was another one that was sacked uh, in uh, northern Greece. Uh, and so he was pretty mad about that. And so I think in a drunken rage, he had it burned down. And he wasn't really planning to have it as his own capital. I think he was going to try to shift his capital like Babylon in Mesopotamia. Uh, and so that's, you know, why it's all destroyed now. And it's all a bunch of ruins. If he, you know, can go there. Uh, also, another thing about Darius, Darius was the one that uh, created the Royal Road, uh, and the Royal Road was a Persian highway system that connected Iran uh, with Turkey. It was started in the 
uh, I think early part of the fifth century, like I want to say close to the 490s is when they started building it. And it was considered one of the first major uh, highway systems built in the, in, in the world uh, at the time. Uh, and uh, it started where Susa is, one of their cities uh, in southern Iran, and it pushed westward across the Tigris River Basin into Turkey and ended in western Turkey near a city called uh, Sardis. It's a Turkish, a Persian city right here. Uh, it was used to move their military around, of course, uh, which was easier, like among their different provinces, act as a postal system. They, they could deliver mail, messengers, obviously for trade, for like economic reasons, uh, was the other reason why they also did it as well. Uh, another thing, too, in the slide here, uh, satraps. That's something that um, Darius the Great was known for also creating, too. Satraps were, satraps were these local governors uh, that the Persian uh, kings appointed all throughout the whole empire uh, to basically control the different provinces of the state. And under uh, I know under King Darius or D Darius the Great, there were 36 provinces at one point uh, that were ruled by a satrap or Persian governor. Uh, and that's how they governed the state. And the um, satraps were kind of like, um, they were kind of like um, governors. No, no, excuse me, not governors. They were kind of like viceroys. A viceroy is kind of like a, a governor that uh, is kind of like the eyes and ears of the king. And he kind of acts in the king's name. That's pretty much what a, uh, satrap is. Uh, also, each um, province, a satrap, uh, where the satraps reigned, is called a satrapy with a Y on the end. Uh, also, Alexander uh, liked the satrap so much that he borrowed the idea, like a you know, ruling with these local governors all over the, his empire. So, when his empire formed or whatever after he conquered Persia, he, he appointed local officials as satraps. And the Persians were open to different cultures, different religions. And that was something that was kind of unique about the Persians. So a lot of these satraps were probably local people that they put in power. But that's like a like part of the royal road you're looking at right there. Uh, that was like one of the their major cities, Pasigade, uh, which is in southern Iraq, where uh, southern southern Iran where it was. But yeah, the ruins of um of course, what you're seeing Persepolis. Yeah, not much is there. They're trying to obviously fix it up a little bit, but that's basically, you know, what it looks like now today, um, you know, after what, I guess, Alexander did a long time ago. Great ruler, but yeah, he destroyed all these great places, I guess. Kind of gives him a bad name now. All right, one more thing, too, I need to talk about is Zoroastrianism. That's something that um, the Persians were also known for uh, as well, Zoroastrianism. And uh, Zoroastrianism was a type of uh, monotheistic Persian religion, uh, which was real popular um, for a couple hundred years uh, throughout that region of the Near East. Uh, I think other states used it like the Sassanids, I think in the Seleucid Empire, it was practiced. Uh, the Parthian Empire, I think, had it later uh, as well. And it was a type of monotheistic religion that was based on this prophet named Zoroaster. He's, he goes by different names. Zoroaster is the common name, I know, in the West. And then I think in uh, that part of the Near East, they also called him Zarathustra, is what they dubbed him. And... Um, Zarathustra or Zoroaster was some kind of Iranian prophet and teacher uh, that was big uh, throughout um, the Near East, like in Iran. Uh, and um, apparently he had visions where he was approached by this god uh, that he called Ahura Mazda, which you see here. And Ahura Mazda is a um, Persian uh, name that supposedly means wise lord. So they often call him the god of wisdom, I think, and, and uh, the Persian Zoroastrianism type religion. Uh, and um, I think he was a creator god as well. 
And uh, Zoroastrianism was one of the first religions where uh, they believed there was a struggle going on on the earth between spirits that were good and evil. Um, so Ma, uh, Ahura Mazda would judge everyone according to how well they fought the battle of good and evil. So you get this idea of like, you know, that there's good spirits out there, bad spirits, demons, angels, Satan, those kind of things are ideas that the this particular religion first kind of brought up uh, originally. So they think it influenced other religions. Like um, it led to, they think, some influences with Judaism, Christianity, uh, Islam. Uh, so that's basically, you know, in a nutshell, um, what it is. Um, however, um, the religion has declined over the years uh, up to like, you know, medieval modern times. Uh, Islam came into the region and caused it to, to decline. So it's not as popular as it used to be. Only about 2 million or more people practice uh, Zoroastrianism now. Uh, and it's mostly situated in like Iraq, Iran, Syria, kind of around those areas uh, where people still practice uh, that monotheistic religion. So, so it has been compared with other religions later, like I'm saying, Judaism, Christianity, uh, Islam. And um, yeah, for a while, it was really popular religion, you know, because, you know, the Persians were everywhere, you know, throughout the Near East. But since then, it's kind of gone down. So it's kind of a debate about how old it is. Like, um, I know Zoroaster says 600 BC, but uh, they think Zoroaster, you know, may have lived anywhere from that time back to maybe a thousand BC, but he lived like sometime before King Cyrus and King Darius, likely. All right, next I'm going to talk about the Phoenicians. I'm going to get, get, get in just for a few minutes and talk about them today. Let me uh, show you a short video on the Phoenicians, and then I'll spend a few time, few minutes talking about that um, particular civilization uh, overall. So let me get to a little short video on the Phoenicians. Since the ancient Phoenicians didn't have much room to grow crops, they turned to the Mediterranean Sea and became traders. They traded glass, metal objects, cedar timber, and pottery for silver, ivory, tin, and many other products. Since they spent so much time traveling by sea, the Phoenicians established colonies along the Mediterranean coast where they could rest, repair their ships, and get fresh food and water. Some colonies, like Carthage, became important cities in the ancient world. One of the main products they traded was a beautiful purple dye. The Phoenicians even got their name from a Greek word that means purple red. Where did the dye come from? Legend says that Melquart, the god of the city of Tyr, was walking on a beach with his girlfriend when his dog started to eat a murex snail. The dog's mouth and teeth turned purple red and the girlfriend demanded a robe of that color. Melquart gathered some snails and had his people make the first purple robe. Most writing systems in Phoenician times were based on pictures. Picture writing was slow and the Phoenicians needed a fast way to keep track of things they bought and sold, so they developed an alphabet. They wrote on wax tablets at first, then on Egyptian papyrus. Unfortunately, very few of their writings exist today. The Phoenicians shared their writing system with everyone they met, which is why they are called the carriers of civilization. The Greeks and Romans adopted the Phoenician alphabet, but changed it a little. Over time, the alphabet changed more and became the one we use today. Did you know that the Phoenicians were probably the first people to use the North Star for navigation or that they raised elephants on farms? And this is only the beginning. There are many more interesting things to learn about the Phoenician civilization. All right, so a little, little short video on the Phoenicians. Uh, about who they were, uh, which I'm going to get more into for a few minutes and talk about that uh, as well. So we just talked about the Persians, and then, of course, I am going to talk a little bit about uh, the Phoenicians today. Now, the Phoenicians were a civilization uh, that you can see there. Those are the dates they peaked from, uh, which was from um, 12 to about 800 B.C. Uh, is about where they the time period of where they were. Um, so 
uh, this particular civilization is a little different than some of the other ones. Um, the Phoenicians were a type of people uh, that developed in what we now call Lebanon, uh, modern Lebanon, which is right here. Uh, and uh, Lebanon is like right here above where Israel is. Uh, and their peak civilization, 12 to 800 BC. Uh, and those are the kind of cities you see that they were known for, uh, the Phoenicians. They had like the uh, cities of Tripoli, Byblos, Sidon, uh, or some that were examples. Uh, Tyre uh, was also famous. Uh, Acre, which is now in northern Israel, I think was at one point part of, uh, oh, and Byblos. Yeah, Byblos is real famous because that's where the word Bible comes from, supposedly that word. And um, the Phoenicians were a maritime civilization. What does that mean? It means that they were known for uh, basically sea trade, trading throughout the Mediterranean Sea uh, region. Uh, and um, they were great sailors, great shipbuilders. Uh, they, they had these um, uh, ships called a birene that were famous, that they would sail up and down uh, the coastlines and Mediterranean Sea. Uh, and some people think they even sailed into the Atlantic Ocean, uh, the Phoenicians. And um, the Greeks called them Phoenicia because of the fact that um, the purple dye uh, is something that they were known for selling to people, which they made it from this type of uh, sea snail that's called murex. That's the scientific name that they call it. I guess they would catch these uh, or on the sea or whatever, and they would crush them up and make dye out of them. The dye was kind of like a purple bluish color. Uh, hence, I guess it would get on their hands uh, or arms or whatever. And so the Greeks would call them purple people, you know, hence. Um, so, so that's where the name came from originally. And so um, Phoenicia means, I think, the purple land or the land of the purple people or something like that is usually with the translation of what the name means. But they would sail up and down the Mediterranean coast all over the place, you know, selling their goods to people. They lacked natural resources. They didn't have too many natural resources. I think that was one of the dye that they made, like was one thing that they had. And then the other thing that they had was like cedar wood. Cedar wood was another thing that they had uh, as well a lot, uh, and or pine trees as well. They would make that to make ships and other things out of, um, you know, stuff as well. Uh, another map here. Here's a closer, a close-up map showing you where Phoenicia is. So there's location of Phoenicia. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, above Israel. Israel's right here. And then yet Syria is over here. Like Syria, Turkey's over here. So it's kind of giving you a location of about where it is. I think that uh, the, there's a bunch of mountains there, I think, too. But I think they're up here called the, I want to say they're called the Phoenician Mountains or something like that. That are right there. Now, over time, what happened was the Phoenicians then spread westward across the uh, Mediterranean Sea. Uh, and they went into North Africa. They settled there. They had like cities all over the place, like throughout the Mediterranean Sea. But they traded with like Egypt. Crete, Cyprus, Greece, parts of Italy, Sicily, Sardinia, Corsica, Spain. Uh, there's even a theory that they went up the coast here to like Britain and all that. Um, but they founded a city here later uh, that's called Carthage. Carthage was founded about 900 BC, uh, roughly. Uh, and um, the Carthaginians, as they're called later, becomes an empire. It's more of a trading empire uh, that was mostly dominant in the Western Mediterranean Sea. And it became a rival state uh, to what is the uh, Roman Roman Republic, which will be later. Uh, and um, later on, they fight a war called the Punic Wars, which you may have heard of. And... Um, um, if you know later what happens, the Carthage, it gets destroyed, which is kind of sad. But in the second century BC, it'll later be destroyed by the Romans. And of course, what's left of Carthage, which is uh, in Tunisia, 
today in North, North Africa. It's now just a bunch of ruins, just like, you know, Persepolis and all that. Uh, one more thing that the Phoenicians are also known for is their alphabet. Uh, the Phoenician alphabet was considered the first major phonetic alphabet. You saw the little video clip you'll see later, uh, which uh, shows how um, the language itself was written on either papyrus or wax seals, like, like uh, you know, uh, tablets. Uh, and um, part of why they developed the language was they wanted to be able to communicate with people with a more simplified language. Uh, and um, kineiform, hieroglyphs, you know, were kind of complicated languages. Uh, and so that's how Phoenician developed. It's a type of Semitic language that was, you know, based in Canaan originally. Uh, and over time, it influenced other languages later. Like it influenced pretty much Hebrew, Arabic, Aramaic type Semitic languages. I say Greek, Latin, and other languages uh, were later also influenced by Phoenician as well. Uh, and um, it had 22 letters, uh, all consonants, no vowels, uh, which a lot of early, you know, phonetic alphabets had, uh, which they'll later add vowels, you know, like they do now with Arabic, Hebrew, etc. So that's who the Phoenicians were. Uh, Phoenicians, you know, um, there's cultures not around anymore, but uh, that civilization, of course, uh, will uh, influence later people, especially with the whole language thing, you know, and also the word phonetic, you know, which is you know still used today uh, as well. So that's a little history about the Phoenicians and who, who they were as a people, but they are the first of several of these maritime civilizations that come. We'll get to the Minoans later was another one. The Greeks were big maritime uh, cultures as well. So we'll get to those later in the future overall. Right. Let me review real quick, of course, on Persia and the Phoenicians. Uh, now, um, says here, which empire conquered the Chaldeans? Uh, that was the Persian Empire. Uh, they conquered, of course, um, the um, Chaldean Empire, which was made up of Mesopotamia, or what we call Iraq. Uh, what was this empire's nickname? It was called the Achaemenid Empire, which is down here. Achaemenid, that's what they called it. It was the Greek name that the Greeks uh, named for the dynasty of kings that ruled Persia. So it's called Achaemenid, uh, which is pronounced in different ways. Um, what two kingdoms and tribes made up their empire? It was mostly made up of um, the Medes, where they got the kingdom of Media. So they got the Medes. And then the other one was, of course, Persia, Persians. Uh, so you have those two states mostly. Other, they had other states, too, as well, that were kind of around Iran that they added in later. Those are the initial two states. And then from there, the state expanded until it grew, uh, like I told you before. Uh, who were they related to? The ancient Iranians. The Iranians were related to Indo-Aryan peoples. Some it's called Aryans or Indo-Aryans. Uh, and um, Aryans were peoples that came out of like southern Russia, in the southern part of Europe, close to like the um, Black Sea, Caspian Sea area. And they migrated southward uh, into that area. Others went also in India, but uh, the ones we're talking about are called Indo-Iranians usually, is what they call those Aryan peoples that are Iranian. Uh, who was Cyrus the Great? Cyrus the Great uh, was the founder of the Persian Empire. Uh, he was, of course, known as King Cyrus II originally, but he founded the empire in the mid-6th uh, century uh, BC. Uh, and um, his empire uh, mostly started in Iran, and then expanded eastward and westward uh, to control parts of the Near East. Uh, his dynasty he founded, of course, was known as the Achaemenid. Achaemenid dynasty, um, which, by the way, was named after one of his um, grandfathers, uh, where the name came from, they say anyway. Uh, and this dynasty would rule down to 330 BC. Uh, I think the last king was, I want to say, Darius III or something like that, but it's around for over 200 years, uh, the Achaemenid dynasty. 
how large was the Persian Empire? The Persian Empire stretched all the way uh, from Iran to uh, Egypt uh, and into Turkey. So it included, like I told you, Iran, India, Afghanistan, Iraq, Turkey, Syria, Egypt. That's the bulk of it. So it was a huge empire, about 80 million people maybe uh, that may have been part of it. Uh, and it was the largest empire in the world at the time uh, before Alexander conquered it and added it on his. What famous road did the Persians build in their empire? The uh, Persians, um, of course, um, are known for building a highway system called the Royal Road. It was considered the first major highway system constructed in the world. And it ran from southern um, Iran, where Susa is, the city of Susa. And it went through Iraq all the way to Western Turkey, where the city of Sardis is. It's about 15, 1,600 miles long or more. Uh, and it was built to connect the different provinces of the empire. It also was used for trade, moving the armies around. It also acted, like I told you, as a postal system. In fact, Herodotus was the first to write about it in his, in his uh, the histories of Herodotus. He, he did mention about it. So... It's one of the first famous roads in the world, uh, and it was, of course, borrowed by other people like the uh, Greeks Greeks and Romans later would copy, you know, the Persians with their own highway systems as well. Uh, what were satraps? Satraps were, of course, um, the uh, Persian Empire's governors or viceroys uh, that controlled the provinces uh, of, of the empire. Uh, I told you there were 36 of these uh, provinces that were that were you know created by King Darius the Great, um, and um, I think the word satrap. I thought I wrote it. Oh yeah, there it is. The word satrap, by the way, means protector. If you want to know in Persian, but it's basically like a viceroy. Uh, it's more or less what it was. And so the satraps were kind of like the eyes and ears of the king. You helped rule over the state. Uh, they act like a viceroy. Uh, what was the main religion of the Achaemenid Empire? The main one, of course, was, like I told you, was Zoroastrianism, uh, of course, which was a type of monotheistic religion uh, that was originally based in Persia. Uh, and it was based on a monotheistic Persian god that I told you was called Ahura Mazda. Uh, and um, Ahura Mazda was this good god. god. It was like a good, good spirit uh, that people could, if you followed that god, you would like go to heaven, I guess, kind of like following Jesus. You go to heaven or whatever. Uh, and um, then they had evil spirits, I told you. Like if you followed them, I think they believed you would end up in like a hell. Because I think they were one of the first to kind of believe in the idea of a Satan, hell kind of thing that they they, they believed in. Uh, the founder was a man named Zoroaster, or also known as Zarathustra, and he lived a long time ago, like two, 3,000 years ago. Uh, he was like an Iranian prophet and teacher, and he started the religion, which spread throughout the Persian Empire later. But it was around a while. It was like under the Sassanid Empire and the Parthian Empires, which were kind of like other Persian empires that existed later. Uh, also, uh, who were the Phoenicians? Uh, Phoenicians, um, of course, were, like I told you, Semitic peoples uh, that I told you lived around where uh, Canaan is, where modern Lebanon is now today. Uh, and the Phoenicians uh, developed as a culture um, in that area, uh, mostly known for maritime trade. That's primarily what they were known for. Uh, they were, they traded with the sea. They were sea traders. I told you they used these uh, ships called a birine, uh to sail up and down the Mediterranean coasts, maybe even into the Atlantic Ocean. I think some people would claim as well. Uh, and um, they later got a nickname uh, called the Purple People because they were known for selling like a dye uh, that was made from like sea snails. Uh, that's called a murex. Uh, and uh, these snails would be, you know, I guess cooked down or, or made into like a dye, uh, which they'd use for dye cloth. Uh, so I guess they got it on their hands or uh, arms or whatever. Uh, and so the Greeks later called them purple people. 
uh, which is what Phoenician means. And then I guess Phoenicia itself, like the uh, collection of states that were there, uh, meant the, the land of the purple because of the purple dye. The purple dye, by the way, had different nicknames. It was called royal purple because it was like for the wealthy uh, nobility. I think some people call it Tyre, Tyre, Tyrian purple or something like that because of Tyre, the city of Tyre, you know, making a lot of dye. But royal purple is the common nickname they call the dye. Uh, what famous colony and civilization did they found in North Africa? Uh, they founded a colony and city uh, in North Africa called Carthage. Uh, Carthage became like the capital of the Carthaginian Empire, which was this uh, Phoenician-based uh, maritime empire, which was in the Western Mediterranean later. I think it founded about 900 BC. And it was founded, uh, the city itself was founded where Tunisia is. In fact, the capital of Tunisia, Tunis, is where the ruins of Carthage is now. So that became the basis of the Carthaginian Empire. The Carthaginians would peak about 3rd, 2nd century of BC, but they would be destroyed by the Romans in the Punic Wars. Uh, what was the Phoenician alphabet? The Phoenician alphabet was a Semitic alphabet originally. Uh, it was considered the first major phonetic alphabet uh, that developed. Uh, and um, it was a type of alphabet you saw in the little short video that was written on like um, papyrus uh, and then also written on um, tablet form. Uh, as well. And um, they developed the Phoenician language because they wanted something simplified. They could communicate with people, uh, write better records. Uh, and so I told you how uh, this alphabet was very simplified. It only had 22 letters uh, in the alphabet uh, with only consonants originally. And then later they added vowels uh, in the future with other alphabets. So Phoenician was important because Phoenician um, influenced other people to develop alphabets similar to it. You know, like Hebrew, Aramaic, uh, Arabic were all kind of influenced by Phoenician. Greek, Latin, etc. was all influenced by Phoenician. Uh, so that's the lineage of a lot of languages, especially in, like in North Africa, Europe, and the West. You know, even like your English, whatever, English language or whatever, is somehow descended uh, from that. So anyway, that's that's pretty much it for lecture on Persia and the Phoenicians. Uh, later, I am going to move on uh, to talk about the Israelites. I'll probably do that in another lecture on Wednesday. We don't really have time to do that, but I will move on to talk about that later and get to it later. So not today uh, about that. Uh, but this lecture I will post later, of course, on my YouTube channel. Uh, I'm trying to stream it through my Facebook page. And let me know how that's going on. I don't know if that's working or not, but we'll see how that goes. But I am going to post this on my YouTube channel. But we have already a 10 o'clock lecture that I've already posted on YouTube right now. So you can go ahead and watch that right now for now. So uh, before we go, don't forget, uh, I do have, of course, uh, an announcement, of course, that's in uh, on Canvas right now. So don't forget about it. Uh, but don't forget, uh, remember, you do have, um, you got uh, your, of course, exam coming up that you'll need to start working on right now, uh, which I have posted. That's due next week on Monday, September 28th. So go ahead and start working on that. Uh, of course, uh, the main topics, of course, for that exam will be prehistory, Mesopotamia, uh, and of course, Egypt. So those three uh, right there, make sure you uh, check that out. Uh, and don't forget also the key terms assignment is supposed to be due today, the first one. So try to get that posted to uh, the grade book. If you can't figure it out, you know, just email it to me uh, also as well. So that's it for today. Um, I will see y'all, uh, you know, uh, later on Wednesday. And I'll put up, of course, another lecture of course, for Wednesday, uh, which that'll be on the Israelites. And I don't know if I'm going to be covering anything else after that. We'll see how that goes, what kind of time we got. But after uh, 
talking about the Israelites. I am going to be moving on to talk about, I think, ancient India's next after that. So that's it for today. And I'll see you all, of course, Wednesday for another lecture uh, in History 11, 11 13. So if you have any questions about that, let me know on my YouTube channel uh, or also email me at simond at mybrcc.edu. Okay? So y'all take care. Y'all have a good week with the rest of your um, schedule.